Howdy. So I have a 2010 Cummins 6.7 ECU here. And uh, this one was sent to me because it said that uh, they had a tuner connected and something happened with the tuner like halfway through programming the ECU and it's bricked the ECU. Um, so they reported that it has a code of U1601, which is the uh, software missing from it. Um, so we're going to try to fix this up for the customer. Uh, first thing I want to do is actually I want to just make my connections here and verify that um, you know it's got the 1601 and maybe maybe I can see a part number for it. Here are the connections that we need to do and we can see it's the gray connector. We need to hook up the keep alive memory which is the battery. We have run, we got uh, ground, and then we just need the can C uh, plus and minus there. All right, so I've got my connections made here. I've got the Altel pulled up into the 2010 RAM. Um, the can lines, I'm not sure if you need a 120 resistor or not. This particular wire I'm using, I've already got it there. So if you don't have communication, just you know, throw a 120 across there and you should be good. Uh, I'm looking at the current consumption here. That's normal, so that's good. That's about what that should be. Uh, so let's go ahead and try to go into the ECM and see what we see. We should be able to go into it because the customer said they were pulling U1601. So we should be able to do that as well. There we go. So we do have the U1601. Let's back out and check the ECU information. See if we can't get the part number from it. Usually the part number is gone, but well, no, look, there it is. That's good. That is good news. We might be able to recover this one without having to connect through BDM, which is good for me, bad for you guys, because I'm sure y'all would have liked to seen that in the video. But let's just keep going here. So our software is one, two, three, five, zero, three, three. Uh, is that three? three? Yeah, sorry. One A G. Okay. And I have the VIN and stuff, so that's good. So let me back out of here. And now I am going to open up my Chrysler software. So let me switch to my display view. Okay, I'm going to open up my virtual machine. It's Chrysler Flash. Here I have to go back to Chrysler Calibration. And now this was a 2010. Let me make sure I have the calibration. It's not there. Uh, let's see, this is an ECM, so let's, is it one of these? 331. It's not there. This is a 2010, right? Let me check. 2013. Hmm? 1235033. Oh, three. Yeah, I definitely don't, I don't have it there. Let's check in here. Man, I hope I have it. It's not looking good for me. Oh, you know what? I think none of these were in... I think none of them were in the year 2010. That's what it was. Yeah, so I, I went to 2012 because I think they had all of them. So I do see 1, 2, 3, 5, 3, 3. Is this it? 1, 2, 3. No, it's 5, 0. 1, 2, 3, 5, 0. 3, 3, 1, A, G. And I have A, K, which is the updated part. And also you can see that this file is missing, missing the FL part, I think. But we'll, we'll take care of that. So I'm going to go ahead and c 
copy this. Okay, and now we need to put this missing file here. And it's not in any of these, so I forgot how I did it. I think I usually take one from 2009 and put it in there. Sorry, I had too many, too many different folders here. Yeah, let's take this one. And I think that this one will work. And this is not a CM2100 though, so let's change this to CM2200, which I, I don't believe that you need to do, but I'm just going to do it anyway. Okay, so the pass through I'm going to use is just my JVCI here, just because that's what I got in front of me. And it usually does uh, dodge stuff pretty good, actually. So I'm going to go back to my display view and my virtual machine here. Connect that. I'm going to open up my old school legacy flashing app here. I'm going to select my pass through and I'm going to hit start. Now, thankfully, since this already has the correct part number, it should just flash, right? So hopefully we can go through this process, no problem. All right, so that took quite a while to do that, um, but it says it is done now. So let's switch back over and take a look with the auto here. Let's wait till the VCI connects, and then let's see if our U1601 is gone. I think it should be. And then all that will be left is to write the VIN number. And that ECU will be complete. Well, that's weird. They only sent me 13 digits for the VIN. So I won't be able to do that part yet. I'll have to, I'll have to call them and get the, the full VIN number. Unless it's still in here. That'd be nice. Alright, there's our communication, and thankfully our VIN number is still there. Let me match it with what they have. So 3C6UD5HL1CG15, that's right, and they forgot the last four. Yeah, that's, that's odd. But uh, yeah, thankfully it's still there, so I don't have to worry about that. Check codes. All good. So I'm just going to erase these codes here. And that is it. This job is done. That one was uh, easy for me. But like I said, a little bit unfortunate for you guys. I think y'all would have much preferred to see me uh, connect to it through BDM uh, with the cast. But maybe next time.